<laughs> Great. Well, we wanted to welcome you tonight to this presentation on renewable energy. I'm Amy Larson, and I'm from Selco, the Southeast Library Cooperative. And we have partnered with the ERC, the Experiment in Rural Cooperation, to bring um, different forums to Southeast Minnesota on rural sustainability. And it's a grant provided by the Library Services and Technology Act. And tonight we're really excited to have Lou Schwartzkopf here, and he's an expert in renewable energy and a professor of physics at Mankato, not Mankato State, now I'm saying it now, Minnesota State University in Mankato. So without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to you. Well, thanks very much, Amy. Uh, it's, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I took a look at the website uh, for the lecture series, and I see I'm in good company. Uh, Joel Haskard uh, from Southeast Certs spoke before, and I uh, know Joel and know him to be a, a very knowledgeable uh, person. I don't know if anybody here heard him, uh, but if you uh, missed his presentation, you missed something really good because he has a lot to say about uh, Minnesota's energy future. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> I have a bit of a cold. I hope my voice doesn't give out completely tonight. But here goes. Uh, there's my uh, title, and I will uh, talk for about 40 or 60 minutes. If you have any questions, um, feel free to interrupt me while I'm going through what I have to say. Uh, and what I want to talk about is three topics. Uh, peak oil, uh, which is a big concern of mine, especially recently. I want to talk about renewable energy in Minnesota, what we're doing, and what the prospects are for energy independence for Minnesota. And the bottom line, incidentally, for uh, I've done a calculation county by county, and for Dodge County, things really look pretty good. And we'll see that a little bit later on. And then if there's time, I want to say a little bit about climate change. Uh, but before I uh, launch into this stuff, I have a question for you folks, or two questions actually. How many people here have heard of uh, climate change or global warming? Okay, everybody? Uh, uh, no surprise there. What about peak oil? So in, in reference to we peaked as to how much there is and how much we're going to find, or what does that mean by peak? Uh, peak in world oil production, okay. uh, not in what there is. Oh. Okay. Well, this is uh, kind of a sleeper of an environmental crisis that I think might be upon us uh, right now. So one of my tasks is to make people aware of peak oil because knowing about it and what it is, that gives us the opportunity to mitigate some of its effects. So uh, the first thing I'll talk about is peak oil. So uh, that's what it is. Uh, peak oil does not mean that uh, we've run completely out of oil, although eventually we will. Uh, oil is a non-renewable resource. There's only a finite amount in the ground, and sooner or later all that oil will be uh, used. Uh, that's not peak oil, however. Uh, peak oil means that world oil production reaches its maximum, and once it's reached its maximum, if the demand for oil continues to increase, and it's increasing here in this country because of increase in population, and also in the developing countries, especially India and China, if the demand continues to increase when world oil production peaks, then demand will exceed supply and the price will be uh, bid up. And in just a bit I'll show you that there's good evidence that we've already <clears throat> in fact reached the peak. Now the reason peak oil doesn't mean the end of oil has to do with the geology of oil reservoirs. 
if you look at a particular oil province like Oklahoma, say, and look at the reservoirs in that province, uh, initially uh, when the oil is found, then it's easy to get the oil out. But when you get to the halfway point in production of any oil reservoir, then uh, the rate at which you can get the oil out starts to decline. And you, you have to take it at the natural rate. So what's meant by world peak oil is the point at which uh, all the oil reservoirs around the uh, world have reached their peak and world oil production is in decline. And that's illustrated on this graph here. Uh, BP means British Petroleum. Uh, British Petroleum has lots of good information on oil reserves, and I took this from one of their publications. <clears throat> yeah, what it uh, shows on the vertical axis is millions of barrels per day uh, through time starting with the beginning of the 20th century and this is a graph of US onshore oil production <clears throat> and the thing to notice is that during the first part of the 20th century was when uh, discoveries of oil were being made so the production of oil increased as the discoveries more oil was found and more uses were found for the oil but then here, right around 1970, uh, U.S. onshore oil production peaked and has been in decline ever since. And the production curve follows this symmetric bell-shaped curve for uh, U.S. onshore oil production. Now, the other thing to note here is this is called a Hubbard curve. The reason for the name is that there was a petroleum geologist named M. King Hubbard who worked for Shell Oil, who was the first one to predict that U.S. oil production would peak. He predicted that in 1959. When he predicted it, uh, his work was not given very much credence uh, in the uh, oil community or anywhere else. Uh, people said, well, it's not going to peak. We'll be able to get as much oil as long as we want. So when this peak actually occurred, his work was taken more seriously. And after that happened, uh, the question arose, well, this is U.S. oil production. What about world oil production? So here's a graph. Uh, this is a graph that I made from data that I got from various sources. And what it plots is annual world oil production on the vertical axis in billions of barrels. So uh, right about now, annual world oil production is 27, 28 billion barrels every year. Uh, and this is starting with 1900 or so. And you see the same pattern for annual world oil production as for U.S. oil production. Uh, namely, it starts out slow, and then as more discoveries are made and more use is put to the oil, uh, production increases. But they're not a smooth increase for world oil production. There's a little dip right there in 1975 uh, at the time of the Arab oil embargo. And there's another dip right here that occurred at the time of the Islamic revolution in Iran uh, when the um, fundamentalists took over that country. But ever since then, uh, annual oil, oil production has continued to increase. Now, the other curve is a fit uh, that I've made that assumes uh, an endowment, uh, oil endowment for the Earth of uh, 2 trillion barrels, something like that, uh, to fit to the data and shows that we can expect a peak in world oil production to be sometime in 
uh, 20 years between 2000 and 2020. It's pretty hard to narrow it down any more than that from, from this analysis.